Well, I'm excited to be able to tell you a little bit more about the rowing machine generator that I made. It's pretty amazing to see the response that I got after posting my video online. Quite a few of you have emailed me, sent me comments, asking me all kinds of questions. So uh, that's very exciting. And today I'm going to answer some of those questions. I'll show you how it works. And I'll even tell you about some of the design challenges that I had. My son is right here with me. He's going to row on the machine for me in just a minute, just so I can demonstrate it as well. Let me bring you around and let's start by talking about how it works. All right, right here at the business end of this guy. I've already removed the screws. And you can see, this is my Concept 2 rowing machine, which I purchased, uh, used online. I think I paid about a hundred US dollars for it, if I remember correctly, which is a pretty good price. Even used, these guys are pretty expensive. But here you can see the original flywheel and these bolt holes is where the original impeller was. Normally a rowing machine would have an impeller and that's what produces the resistance. As you row, pulling harder produces more and more wind and that's the normal exercise resistance. In this case, we've got electrical resistance and that's getting to the meat of what this video is about. So down here you can see I've got two permanent magnet DC motors. I didn't have to use two, but it's more technical why I'm using two, but it just gives me a little bit more uh, capacity on this rower. So anyway, when you take a permanent magnet DC motor and you spin the shaft, you actually produce current at the wires. So you are effectively turning the motor into a generator. Now, this idea came to me from my YouTube channel. Uh, quite a few people, let me get around the other side so that you can see the motor mount a little better. I actually received a large number of requests to make a wind power generator. And uh, quite frankly, that just wasn't an interesting topic to me. And so I kind of ignored it for a while, but people kept asking. And so I finally decided, well, what if I made a human power generator? That would be more interesting to me. It gave me a chance to talk to my kids about how uh, energy is produced, how dams work and things like that. So that was very exciting to me. And that was the birth of this project here. It sort of escalated from us generating power to uh, powering the Wii, which I'll get to in just a minute. But anyway, these motor mounts are really basic. As you can see, I made these uh, out of wood and then painted them black. And that's what supports the motors. They are coupled to the flywheel with these belts here. And I wanted to leave the impeller, uh, excuse me, I wanted to leave the flywheels on the motors. So I had to buy a pulley that would match this uh, J style groove on the belts that come with the motors. Now these two motors, I got both of them for free. This first one I found just on the side of the road. It was actually a treadmill and then I took the motor out. And then this one, was also in a treadmill, but I found it in a free listing online. So the person just said they need somebody to haul it off and you can have it. And uh, I took them up on their offer. Now this flywheel is kind of large. This is the one that I actually use when I'm exercising. I can disconnect this from powering other devices and just plug lights into it. I'll actually have my son demonstrate that for you in just a moment. But this is what I would consider to be the harder level of resistance. I can put a smaller pulley here and it's a little bit easier to pull, but you produce a lower voltage. So there's a trade off there. Uh, come on over son. Let me have you pull a little bit or just get ready to pull. So let me show you what we're going to do right now. I've got two cables that come off of the machine. This first one comes directly from the motors. This is a really erratic, very unstable voltage. It can vary from five or six volts all the way up to 120 volts, depending upon how hard and how consistent you're pulling. But you can see that that cable is plugged directly into this light rail. All of these lights are wired in parallel. That's how this uh, bar is wired. And I've got a voltmeter here so that you can see exactly how much power my son is producing. Uh, go ahead and pull for me, son. Should turn this on. We're on TV, son. You got to pull hard. Come on. Big pull. Big pull. Ah, oh, that's better. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. 
And you can take a break there, that's good. And as you can see, as the flywheel spins down, the voltage goes down as well. And the lights are going out. That's good, son, thank you. So that kind of gives you an idea. So that this was the, the birth of the idea. I actually started by using this light rail with my kids and they absolutely love it. I mean, they do not leave it alone. If I leave this guy in the living room, they'll spend all day up here uh, rowing on the machine, seeing who can get the lights the brightest, seeing who can produce the highest voltage. I've actually got another little meter, which I have disconnected now, but this uh, device, if you wire it up in series with the light rail, what you'll get is a voltage and amp output and wattage. And so they compete to see who can produce the most watts and who can make the lights the brightest. And then the game that they are most interested in and the one that we say for special events is we put all the lights in the rail. We fill this rail up and we turn the lights off in the house and then they pull and light up the living room. And uh, man, I mean, I'm getting excited right now just thinking about it. That's how much fun they have doing that. We really enjoy it. And that's the game we spend the most time playing. And that's really the whole purpose of this project. It wasn't really about the we so much as teaching my kids about how power is generated and then we having fun with that concept in different ways. Now, when I first brought this to them, the way I introduced the topic is I took a piece of wood and I clamped it onto the flywheel and then made a handle that goes on the wood. And then I uh, attached the wires to a voltmeter. So they had to crank it by hand and they could see the voltage and the current that they were producing just by cranking it. And that was what initially inspired the, uh, the excitement in the house. Beyond that, it just became a thing that we kept doing and it grew into a project that I put onto my YouTube channel. Now, I do wanna mention that the difficult part of this is how do you go from the DC current, which is, can vary quite a bit, which is what you just saw a moment ago, to producing AC current to power, say, the Wii uh, or any kind of video game device. That was the technical challenge. So let me tell you a little bit about that. Now, the, the voltage from here is pretty rough and also the current is pretty rough. So how do I get this to stay in such a way that I could power something the way you would plug it into the wall? And that's where the charge controller comes in. So I bought this guy, this one, this particular one can handle about 20 amps output. It'll handle a supply voltage of up to 100 volts. And that was plenty for my application here with the kids. And it takes that and dials it back to a consistent 14 volts for my inverter. This is where things kind of got complicated for me. At first, I wanted to just take my motors, plug them and power my inverter directly with the motors. But the problem with that was the inverter has a very small operating range. If the voltage is even slightly outside of 12 to 14 volts, it will start beeping, it goes crazy, and it shuts off. And that was not sufficient to power a game. So I needed to stabilize the voltage. The way I solved that problem is, as you can see, I've got my connection here. I take this and plug it into my charge controller. But that is also in parallel with these two tiny batteries over here that I have. This is two six volt batteries and they are hooked up in series to give me 12 volts. And this produces just barely enough power to stabilize the 14 to 12 volts that I get from my charge controller from the, the whole system here. Without these batteries, the inverter freaks out and shuts off. It just, I needed something uh, external to the charge controller that could keep things stable. Now you might be thinking, well, why not use something like this massive car battery? And this was uh, something I actually thought about for a while. A car battery would certainly work. Actually, this is a marine grade uh, uh, battery for a boat. Using a battery like this would certainly work. In fact, it's too much power and that's the problem. Uh, well, it's not a problem functional wise, but it's a problem for my goal of making it work in real time. Using this particular battery, you could stop rowing for hours and everything would continue to run because you're really running off of the stored power in this battery. And that's what led to the very tiny batteries that you see over here. To keep it a game, to make it so that we had to race to get off of the rowing machine. Again, 
it's the the active family part of it that I was really interested in. I wanted the kids to have to hurry up and switch places, and I do this with them. They don't use this machine by themselves. We do it together on the weekend. So it's not connected to their video game time. It's not connected to anything other than family time with dad. So I row and we all take turns rowing and we have to do it fast. And if it shuts off, you ruin it for everybody. And that's the motivation to keep going. So it is a lot of fun. I'm sitting here kind of giggling right now, just thinking about the times we've uh, we've played with it. So I really enjoy it. And they do, too. Now, uh, this these little batteries are just big enough to keep it on for about a minute. If you stop for more than really 45 seconds, it's very likely gonna shut off on you. And that was the goal. Uh, one other thing I wanna say about the flywheel, I don't think I've mentioned this, is that using a smaller pulley here is gonna give you a lower voltage, but it's better for the smaller kids. So I do have two pulleys, uh, one that I got from my treadmill and I actually purchased this one. But this is the one I use when I'm using this guy for exercise, and I use the tiny pulley when I know we're going to be using it on a regular basis. And my daughter, Maya, who's the smallest, when she wants to row, uh, we'll put the small one on there to make sure that she can keep up with everyone else. Now, if you've seen my video on YouTube, there's, it's actually this pulley in there, so it was really challenging for her to keep up with us, and that's why the game ended up quitting on her. But... Uh, Anyway, that's an important side note. Use a smaller pulley will make it easier for the youngest kids to do it for an extended period of time. And that's the important part. They need to be able to go for quite a while, not pulling at max for 10 seconds. You know? We need them to be able to, to, to stay at a more stable voltage. All right, so we've got a stable voltage now. So how do we, how do we power the game? Well, this, as I said, gets plugged into there. My inverter, is, my inverter is getting a constant 12 to 14 volts from the battery and the charge controller. And then I take the Wii, which is plugged in, it's turned on, but it's plugged into the wall. And I want you to notice that it's drawing 19 watts. And that's pretty good for a kid. But you don't want your kid to have to pull more than about 50 watts. I think if you're asking for more than that, they're just not going to be able to do it for very long. Now, some people commented in the comment section, they said, well, isn't that potentially damaging to your game, constantly shutting the game off and they lose their save progress? Why not just plug the TV into the inverter and then plug the, the Wii into the wall? And that way you don't lose your save progress and so on. All those are good ideas. But uh, let me show you the problem with that. Right now, hopefully you can see the Wii is drawing 19.3 watts and the TV is plugged directly into the wall. But if I switch these out, let me turn the Wii off first. All right, it looks like the Wii is in standby mode and you can see now it's drawing about 12 watts. So even turned off but still plugged in, it's drawing about 11 watts. If I switch these guys out. And Wii is almost booted up. There we go. All right, so the Wii is back on, as you can see on the TV there. Oops, sorry about the bumps. And this is about what it'll maintain, 102 watts. If you think your kid's gonna pull 102 watts for more than a couple of minutes, then uh, they need to be training for an Olympic rowing team because a small kid pulling that much is pretty promising. But I don't think I would want my kids to have to pull that hard for that long. Again, it's a game for us. It's not about uh, this. So the, the real issue is the power output. They just can't power the television for very long. And this is why we choose to power the Wii. Now, if that's damaging to the game, it might be. I don't know. But we don't use it that often. We don't, Actually, we don't play video games that often. This is just a fun weekend activity for us. And it's, uh, it's very enjoyable. When I want my kids to stop playing video games, I don't need to use the rowing machine. I just tell them to go outside and they shut off their games and go outside. Personally, I did this extra step because I just thought it was interesting. But if you want to do this at home and teach your kids about uh, energy and power, I wouldn't necessarily try the weed. They really loved this light bar and that cost me very little to buy these little adapters and just plug the lights into the light bar. So to me, the way to go is you skip that guy and this guy, which are the most expensive components, you can take the pulley off of the treadmill 
and make a little mount to get it to fit on the flywheel and that will give you uh, plenty of power in order to power your light well and if you really want to make it fun form turn the lights off in the house and just have at it i hope you guys enjoyed this video this is a lot of fun to get to talk about it again thanks for watching